CGTN headquarters in Beijing. This is The Hub with Wang Guan. Hello and a very warm welcome to The Hub on CGTN. I'm Wang Guan in Beijing. The 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics are not just the playground for athletes, it is also going to be spectacular, according to the IOC president, Thomas Bach, and quote, change the landscape of winter sports forever. Chinese President Xi Jinping aims at converting 300 million Chinese to the joys of winter sports. And believe me, it is already all the craze here in Beijing. Recently, I've teamed up with my colleagues for some excitement on the ice. Hi there, and welcome to this special edition of The Hub on CGTN. I'm Wang Guan. The 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics are around the corner, obviously, and we thought what better way to celebrate the Olympics than to actually live it. So that's why I'm here joining a dozen other anchors and reporters here for a 2022 mini Winter Olympics. Truth be told, I'm one of the participants, one of the four team members. Let's see who will come up on top. The Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics gave a welcome boost to winter sports, and more Chinese than ever are now eager to join the excitement and the fun. The number of standard skating rinks across China has doubled since Beijing was selected to host the Games, and the number is expected to reach 650 towards the end of this year. Our first competition today is speed skating. My coach helped me put on my skates, making sure that the ties protect the ankles, followed by some proper warm-up exercises. We're competing to see who could skate the farthest distance before making a sudden stop. It's like a mini short track speed skating competition, one of China's forte. Now, it is my turn. Hey guys, so uh, we're in the halftime break. Obviously, uh, we won. After a short break, we're meeting up for today's highlight, ice hockey contest. Being a fiercely competitive sport, ice hockey requires a whole different set of equipment. From head to toe, each piece has its own purpose. If you think standing on ice in a full hockey suit is difficult, try turning, twisting, passing and shooting a hockey ball. I was fortunate enough in my first hockey experience to have scored a goal. Apparently, I'm not the best hockey player in the world. I mean, some of the goalkeepers, my colleagues, were way above my expectations. Not my best effort, but I give it all I had. We've all had a long day, exhausting, but it was worth it. I was able to catch up with some of my colleagues and also Zhang Dan, a former world figure skating champion. And they talk about their expectations for the upcoming Beijing Winter Olympics. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? <laughs> we, we, we are just ha having fun. Yeah. yeah. We are not athletes, but we are having fun by our way. Also, I hope that those uh, games will bring uh, a new trend to China, to Chinese people, that we will pay more attention to the winter sports. 就是觉得很幸运吧，能在自己的家门口看到一场呃，在自己家门口举办的奥运会。那作为冰雪人，觉得很荣幸能参与其中。那无论是以任何方式参与其中，都会感到很骄傲。那也希望通过奥运会这种特殊的方式，能让更多的人来关注到关注到奥林匹克精神，让更多的普通人也感受到奥林匹克的这一份精神。真的希望通过冬奥能产生更多的账单，产生更多我们的账单的关键。People have been asking this question: Why is China so keen in hosting and staging big events such as an Olympics?、Um, many years ago, I asked a similar question to late IOC President Rock Rogue, and his answer really struck me. He said, "You need elite sports. You need an Olympics. You need a Liu Xiang and a Yao Ming." To inspire the young kids to love a sport, to look up to,、um, so that grassroots participation can follow elite sport. Elite sport and、uh, grassroots participation complement each other and inspire each other. And I thought that was the best answer I've heard from anyone. So、um, you know, simply、uh, let the games begin and let's really celebrate the Beijing Winter Olympics. Businesses and celebrities have been whipping up support for China's winter sports, and it's worked wonders. 
On today's hub, we have Tong Jian, the world champion of figure skating, to talk about his personal contribution and his involvement in the process. It has been six years since Beijing won the bid for hosting the 2022 Winter Olympic Games. During this period, we have seen that the popularity and awareness of ice and snow sports among the Chinese public has reached an all-time high. Many snow and ice sports programs have made their way to schools. Many snow and ice sports events with Olympic elements have been held in China. Winter sports are also gaining traction at the community level. We're seeing many more events such as ice carnivals and snow congresses than before Beijing's successful bid. In this process, we've made a lot of efforts. We've set up public welfare programs featuring ice and snow sports, trained talented athletes, and held ice and snow cultural exhibitions, among other activities. Through this, more people can feel the charm of ice and snow sports. In the future, I think the event formats will become more established and better received by the general public. The impact and scale of these events and activities will grow hand in hand. We hope to bring new changes to the existing paradigm, for example. We can bring the technology in professional sports to the customer market, just like we've brought aerospace technology into the civilian market. The technology in professional sports can also be adapted for civilian use. The athletes, who can perform very difficult moves on the field, can also be part of a marketable ice theatre with the help of atmospheric music and lighting. Ice theatres can enable more people to feel the charm of sports culture. As a result, more and more people will start to pay attention to it. In this way, retired athletes and young players in sports will have a broader stage to show their talents. We should pay attention to not only the cultivation of sports professionalism, but also the way we display such as professionalism and to the creation of a platform for upward mobility. The development of ice and snow sports goes hand in hand with economic development. With sound socio-economic development, people tend to have higher demand for leisure sports. As a result, ice and snow sports can be part of China's upgraded consumption pattern. People are no longer satisfied with the old way of doing sports. Some will turn to ice and snow sports. I think ice and snow sports will develop hand in hand with economic growth. The trend is irreversible. In this process, as I mentioned earlier about the ice and snow sports industry, sports technology and certain information technology can drive the development of winter sports industry and vice versa. For example, in calculating the speed, trajectory and heart rate of an athlete in alpine skiing, as well as his takeoff time and hand time. Proper equipment and training philosophies are needed for very fine calculations. 
In this process, we will certainly face many challenges. I think the Chinese government has been providing sustained support and investment in this area, including by formulating relevant policies. On the one hand, China is building more sports facilities such as stadiums and make them accessible to the general public. On the other hand, the government has been encouraging private investors as well as ordinary people like us to participate in this industry, so as to guide the sustainable development of this industry. As our domestic manufacturers have better know-how in producing sports equipment, especially heavy-duty equipment, the cost of making ice and snow equipment will eventually go down. In South China, the government has provided favorable land policies for building sports venues such as ice rinks and snow parks. This kind of policies are the most direct way to lower the threshold for sports participation. In doing so, more and more young people can get involved in winter sports. With better products made available for competition, performance and training, people will stop thinking that sports are done merely for the competitions or just for gold medals when they consider sports. In fact, sports can also bring physical and mental health benefits to young people, allowing them to enhance their understanding of rules and culture. The whole system will give ordinary people a sense that sports today are different from the old days and that sports competition can become an integral part of the society in the future and develop very well. Growing sport professionalism can bring about more exciting competitive sports, while sports competition can drive the development of professionalism, the development of the entire ice and snow sports industry from north to south, from equipment to policies from participants to products will take time. We must be patient and careful with this delegate project. Welcome back. Finland has become a key destination for Chinese athletes who want to hone their skating and skiing skills to perfection. Let's now hear how China-Finland cooperation makes winter sports popular and accessible with Veiko Halonen, Chief Executive Officer of Okati Olympic Training Center. Uh, Veiko, welcome to the Hub. How are you? Ni hao. Good morning from Finland. Uh, I'm very well, thank you. Good morning nice to you. winter thank weather you. out there. Wow, thank you very much. I know it's uh, <laughs> winter weathers in Finland. You have a lot of winter weathers, uh, more winter days than most countries in the world. And uh, apparently Finland is doing great in the history of winter sports. Um, 2019 was celebrated as the China-Finland year of winter sports in the lead up to the Beijing Winter Olympics. What experiences can Finland offer to the Chinese, to the sports lovers in China when it comes to winter sport? First of all, I have to say that it sounds straight when you are saying that what could we learn billion of people, billion, billion people of, of, of Chinese, but we are only five million here in the Finland, Finland middle of the winter. But happy to, happy to be in a cooperation with the China and we were so proud of this common winter sport year. Of course, half of the year we have snow and we have winter and, and, and ice and we have, we've learned to enjoy also the winter. Perhaps this is the most important thing. Uh, I would point one thing which was very interesting and that was the president of China, President Xi, he announced that 300 million Chinese should be involved in winter sports and I was so happy to hear about that because I have to tell you that we actually have a same kind of history in, in 50s, 60s, 1950s and 60s uh, Finland announced the so-called people's ski which was the campaign where everybody have to do winter activities, go out for skiing, go out for, for, for nature. And after making a certain number of these, these kilometers of skiing or whatever activities, you send a postcard and a pack post, you get the textile mark, which could be sued on your skiing jacket. And do you believe or not 20% of the people take take part of this campaign and wow. even that I am so old people. that 
in Finland. <laughs> we are five. Yeah, it's it's almost one million people. Uh, right. Oh, I, I'm so I'm that old, and also when I was a small kid, I was doing that as well, and I remember still how proud I was about that textile mark. And yes, those guys who got them every year and different textile mark. So this is one important way how to how to how to involve people for active and enjoy the winter and, and President Xi's campaign sounds very clever yeah, for yeah, us. Yeah. I mean, Vico, you talked about a very interesting thing that is really how to motivate uh, and encourage young kids, how to incentivize them to take up a sport and love it. I mean, I myself is a big lover of winter sports. I recently I tried ice hockey, also speed skating. I mean, it's endlessly fun, right? How, in your opinion, uh, can Finland and can you know, what you have been doing, uh, inspire and maybe enlighten uh, the way Chinese can take up a winter sport. Because usually winter sport is considered an elite sport. You need a big uh, ice skating rink or a, a ice a snow slope uh, to be able to ski or skate. Well, yeah, I understand that. Because here in Finland, as I mentioned, half of the year we have snow and we have ice, so we are so used of enjoying this that it's not a light, a elite, not at all, not at all. It's not expensive. Like, how would I say? At the moment, out there, you can see the the grandparents uh, with their grandkids sliding with uh, plastic sleds downhill and enjoying the, the weather. And, and we borrow these keys for the beginner if they want to taste and, wow. and try it. And this kind of, these kind of things, we um, keep, keep it the level down enough and, and cheap enough for every people. Just enjoy the, the uh, snow and, and, and ice the way everybody find it easiest and, and the best. Of course, also our main target here in the Olympic Training Center is to make up the, the top skiers, top athletes. And, and after they have been winning medals in, in Olympics or world championships, those will be the models for the, for the many of us active people who want to try that. Well, looks so, so nice. Yeah, so I mean, uh, yeah, it's a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. You have to live the sport. I mean, uh, last time I checked, uh, Finland has uh, is leading actually the the medal count uh, in the history of winter sports, winter Olympics. Right? Uh, I mean, it has an outsized influence and impact when it comes to winter sports achievement. Um, in what ways, Veiko, do you think China and Finland can perhaps work together? Uh, when you think about President Xi's ambition to turn 300 million Chinese to be winter sports lovers, um, and also considering that Finland is a country that has a great winter sport tradition, but we also have the COVID, right? So people cannot readily and easily travel. Yeah, as I, I mentioned, the, the, there's two different things: the top athletes, the coming Olympics, these kind of events, which are very important for all of us. Millions and millions and millions of people are following them and seeing the beautiful events and beautiful venues and statistics, and and that's that's of course very important and a way also. Also, we need to get more and more famous people to be involved with doing the sport, like like quite famous guy out, out there in, in China was one Kai, the actor, a famous actor. He visited there, enjoyed the winter activities, and we had a very good time with him. Idols will be a very good part of the getting winter sport activities more famous also in China, I guess. Uh, yes, that's the way. I mean, yeah, of course, uh, you, you've got to have some stars and celebrities to inspire more people to follow suit. Um, you once said that, um, you know, uh, the Chinese athletes' individual skills are not at elite level, but their potential is world class, and the goal is clear. Uh, you want to help them be the best. How do you think that can be achieved? Oh well, yeah, yeah. We we found it very clear in 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 last five years. We've done the cooperation with the Chinese athletes. Uh, when we are five million. If, if, if we found here a talented young people who want to be involved with the um, winter sport, we have to take care of him or her like a gold nugget. Uh, in China, 
you've got hundreds of very, very, very talented, high level talented young athletes who are interested in that. But of course, the personal skills are not on that level. And also the coaching uh, and, and, and for instance, the science of winter sport um, and, and testing, monitoring. These are the things we have been doing here eight years. And this, this is the thing we try to connect. And I, I, I don't mean that all the coaching know-how is here in Finland, not at all, but especially in the winter sport and skiing, for instance, there we have some special skills and experiences and know-how which we, we'd like to deal with the Chinese. And, and this is the thing we are doing here and, and the, the goal and then and coming years, I, I'm definitely sure also the Chinese skiers and ski jumpers, biathlonists will be in the top, I'm, I'm definitely sure. I mean, uh, can you share with us some stories uh, when you, you know, work with your Chinese counterparts, uh, help them train and bring them to the next level? Because uh, as far as I understand, uh, you know, the China and Finland have two very different sporting systems. China, at least in the old days, inherited, a, a, you know, what people call a Soviet uh, nationalized sporting system, although it is uh, evolving itself right now. But Finland has a, you know, a, a private market driven system. Um, do you look at that way too? Uh, I wouldn't say that there is only one way how to do it. Definitely not. We have to combine all the best know-how from, from Chinese athletes, Chinese coaching systems, and, or, and also our, our perhaps things which are different is, for instance, motivating, motivation. As I said, when we found the young athlete as a cold nugget, the most important thing for us is to keep her or his own motivation up here. And, and this, this is, for instance, one small difference between this, the coaching systems. But combining these, these two very talented young Chinese athletes and the, the top, top science and the best coaching in good facilities, that will be the way to get on. And I have to tell you, that, for instance, when we have had in, in past years those Chinese athletes and their own coaches here, for instance, we had a very, very good lecture made by one of the Chinese coach and uh, Chinese coach who was who used to be a coach in rowing and canoeing, yeah. and he learned us how you guys are doing that in China. And this kind of cooperation will be the the most successful way to get also the Chinese athletes on the top. Also, we know that there has been an ongoing uh, training program for Chinese national teams at uh, Vokati Olympic Training Center. And you are the CEO of this very center. Uh, I mean, how are things faring? How are things going in the center? Yeah, well, we're doing fine. Uh, of course, you mentioned this this stupid COVID. It's been it's it's been a problem all over. But uh, lucky us, we've been doing very well even even uh, in this COVID period and the last time. Um, approximately 40, 40 country different countries are training here as our guests and the top top uh, top athletes in the winter sport from from all, all over the world coming here to to use our facilities and and the coaching but at the same time it's not only that even our, our target is clear to make the the top athletes very important part of us is the uh, making holidays for active holiday makers every year we have about 80, uh, 800,000 guests visiting in our resort and the area who will be who are just normal normal active people like you and me and and doing the winter sport and, and going out there and this is also very important to combine the top athletes and the active peoples important because of the business and because of the investments have to be paid in coming years and this is also one thing which which for sure we could do cooperation because I see that in coming months, those beautiful venues you guys have in, in Beijing Olympics will be well known all over the world. And so many other people, not only me, but many other people would like to visit and see them by them, themselves. And that means also that the thing we are doing here in the work at the Olympic Training Center, training the at top athletes and, and offering the facilities for the active holiday makers and people that will be also the, the future in those Olympic venues in Beijing. And finally, what will be your expectations for the upcoming Beijing Games, which is just a couple of weeks away? Oh, well, well, looking forward, I have to tell you that 
it, 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 it's it's a secret. I also got the invitation. I'm so proud of that. I will oh, you're coming to the, the Olympics. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm happy to tell you that I am. Wow. <laughs> and one small, one you small detail quick, because there's that... a quarantine process, right? Or oh, yeah. Maybe there's a closed management I'm, I'm system. So... Uh, I'm so not uh, so proud of this, and and because of that, I have the also the protocol of COVID, which was 72 pages, and, and for sure I'm gonna follow that very very strictly and carefully, and 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 be be sure that the Olympics will be going through uh, safely and and beautifully. But anyway, when I have had the possibility to work with the Chinese and the possibility also to visit the, the coming venues a little, so I'm sure those will be the games, really really the games and 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 we will see the wonderful wonderful uh, olympics in beijing no doubt about it so shall i say welcome to beijing travel safe and take care oh, thank you thank you my that pleasure was see you then mr veiko halanen ceo of the bokati olympic training center and that will do it for this edition of the hub i'll leave you with this music video together for a shared future it is a multilingual version of the Winter Olympic 2022 campaign song. I'm honored and humbled to say that I was part of it. Thank you for watching and bye for now. Fly, I, I, I do the sky. Bye.